Right. Exactly. Well, well, for the listeners, and I'm pretty sure we have a pretty savvy audience here, but I, I'd like to go into a depth of what the Anunnaki are. Who are they? Where Where is their essence of origin? Um, can, can we start there? Sure. We, we have various sources. And you have to understand, before you pin them to one planet and say that's where they're from, Mm-hmm. These are these are galactic colonizers, and they have set up bases on other planets, other moons. So if you knew exactly where the point in history was that you could say, okay, where are they from? I'll try to do that because they did give that to us in the Enuma Elish. Okay, mm-hmm. and that is their epic of creation. And in that account, they seem to indicate to us, and I put this in both my books with my breakdown, is that they came from another solar solar system that was close by to ours. And at some, for some reason, which I believe was the perturbation caused by going through the galactic center for our solar system and possibly theirs at the same time, if, that, if something happened at that junction and their, their small solar system got entrapped in our solar system, this is what they say in the story. And their solar system ended up in a retrograde orbit around our sun. Okay, And they had a planet which by the time we got cuneiform tablets and got this story in Babylon, there's other versions of the story, but the old Babylonian version had already been, I guess you would say, editorially changed to put the deity of Babylon's name in for the planet of origin that they came from. So he called it Marduk in that account. But uh, Marduk was related to one of the other beings in the account, and we know quite well that the home planet was not named Marduk. It was named in many other documents, and they called it Nibiru. Mm-hmm. Correct. Right. And, yeah. and the, the Bible and many other documents have called it many other things, and science is calling it everything from planet 9 to planet X to <laughs> Herculobus to the, you know, Wormwood. So, but I think, uh, I think uh, it's safe to say that from the Enuma Elish account that they came from a planet that had multiple satellites around it. They were probably geothermally heated or working with some sort of Dyson sphere around their planet if they were that far away from our inner sun, even though they had their own central sun, it appears that it was a dark sun or a, a brown dwarf. We're not really quite sure. Um, um, Carlos Ferrada wrote about this in the 50s, and he published a map calling it Herculobus. And it sat approximately, according to him, about 35 billion miles from our sun, stationary. Um, and according to Dr. Neugebauer in 1981 in the paper, when they first used the um, satellites, the IRS satellite, to locate Planet X or whatever was perturbing Neptune, mm-hmm. he stated he thought it was 50 billion miles away and not moving. So it's very possible that their brown dwarf sun doesn't move, but their inner planets move around their sun just like ours do, and there may be some overlap in the trajectory, <laughs> or mm-hmm. one of their planets may be roaming between the two suns at a foci uh, and then returning. So that seems to be the periodicity that they described in a retrograde orbit around our sun. So in the account, um, and I, I hopefully I don't spend too much time on the Enuma Elish, but this is kind of the, like the fundamental starting place for the Anunnaki story. Uh, in their account, the first time through, according to the Enuma Elish, um, they had to do some things to the inner planets in order to prevent collisions. And I thought that was very, very interesting because it kind of unveiled the level and extent to which they had technology even then. Mm-hmm. Very, very significant planet splitting technology okay so the idea of an atomic bomb here is probably a joke to them right and the fact that it was pl- traveling in retrograde orbit indicates that they had a mobile observatory and they could have seen every planet we had in our inner solar system by going the opposite direction of course that there's the danger of running into it but so in their account the first time through they made some ma- uh, manipulations of the inner solar system including masking the radiance of the sun and playing around with mercury which i thought was very interesting the Mm -hmm. second go around they had a collision and this was described as one of their satellites having an impact with the planet tiamut well tiamut was the the play is a planet which is located approximately where our earth is now it was struck parts of it were broken off and and created the asteroid belt, and then uh, the coalescence of that became our Earth, which they called Ki. But before that, they called it Tiamut. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we got got too, kind of deep into where they're from. I do believe they have affiliations with Sirius, 
the Sirius constellation and the Orion constellation as well, because some of their edifices they've built, they've aligned them to these, uh, trying to you know show you <laughs> show you where they're from. So I think, that, like I said, as galactic colonizers, I think they're in multiple locations, and they mm -hmm. were fac factionalized as well. And before we get too deep in this, before everybody starts going, well, which one's the good one and which one's the bad mm -hmm. one? Right. I kind of want to say something about that because I've done this so many times. Okay. Um, imagine uh, that the United States or some other government did something to another country, lodged a missile over their border, and, and they were viewed as just horrible for doing this, right? Well, mm -hmm. it would be ludicrous to say that the people that lived in that country were all evil and bad because of what the government did, right? Well, it's no different in a population of us or another civilization. It's all made up of individuals who have free choice. So when I say that they, the Anunnaki had personalities from serial killers to saints, that goes for all of them, and that goes for us too. So, so the idea of wanting to go, okay, this one's on the good team, that one's the bad one, I should worship this one and not divide that one, just be careful, okay? Because it's, it's, it's not that clear cut and dried. And you can't throw them all under the bus and go, well, they were all fallen angels, so uh, they must be demons, right? That's what the religious mm -hmm. right does. So, right. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So with that said, um, I hope I answered your question. 